Hello, welcome to the 1878 FM podcast. It is one of those. It's the Monday after the Saturday before. And when Everton became only the second Premier League team ever to blow a two-goal lead in two consecutive games. Now, this is this is interesting. This is an interesting point you bring up, Baz. There you go. Because it was Bournemouth, wasn't it? It was Bournemouth. And do you know who Bournemouth's next two games were after they lost those? Leicester City. No, and... they were Everton and oh. Everton. And they ah. beat us twice. Mm. Unfortunately, we don't have that. Do we, we don't have Southampton eight, and Southampton. Eight goals sadly. against, wasn't it, in those two back-to-back games? Mm. Are you suggesting we need to play up. ourselves to get out of this rut? Mm. I, I, we'd probably still get beat. We'd, we'd be tuning them up and get beat 3-2, Sam, obviously. Um, let's just get the footy out the, the way. The ref had scored an own goal. Let's get the footy out the way. Go on, then. Quickly. Uh, I mean... Was any anybody else on this podcast remotely surprised when it went two one and thought these will probably win this game now? Because I the minute Watkins added it in, I was like, yeah, I can see what's coming. Uh, anyone have a different opinion to me? I was I was less surprised than I was uh, with the Bournemouth debacle, only because I rate Villa as a decent side. Mm. Um, and I knew that it would be tough going there and getting anything. Um, so yeah, so when when Watkins he, sorry when when Watkins scored, um, and yeah, I just had a horrible feeling of impending doom that we sort of knew where mm. this was going to go. Um, but it could have all been very different, couldn't it? You know, if it weren't for the missed chances. But um, but yeah, it was it was just a horrible flattening feeling once again of of. Not expecting anything, and then thinking, "Wow, we could get something here," you know, and um, and then being disappointed at the prospect of throwing away two points and only coming away with a draw, and then coming away with nothing. Mm. So, yeah, the the, the the short answer is no, not really. <laughs> I mean, Sam, what 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 were your thoughts? Uh, I was pretty much the same because I didn't expect anything going into the match after mm. last week. Mm. Um, we went one 0 up. I was surprised, especially the way the game opened, and they were they were really really on top. And then we got the second goal, and I just thought, well, that gives us a bigger buffer to try and get a point. Really, that, mm. and that's not me being negative. And it's a terrible way to approach following your football team, but that's purely based on recent experience. It's realism, mm. isn't it? It's, yeah, yeah. And I thought, obviously, the longer we can hold out, the more chance we've got of sneaking at three points. Mm. They got that goal, but it was such a soft goal. I mean. They had a couple of chances, but that, that actual goal that went in, I thought was really soft. I thought Keane could have done better. I thought Pickford mm. could have done better. And then once that went in, it, it did just feel like it was a matter of time, really, where they were going to equalise. And once they equalised, there was only going to be one yeah. winner. Although that said, we did have a couple of good chances. At, uh, I think there was two dumb chances. One was a 3-2, yeah. one was a 2-2, wasn't it? One was no, a 2-1. One was, one was a 2-1. Two two one. We yeah. went on 3-1 with that. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah so, well, I mean... I thought he was upset. Weirdly, I've I've sort of I've come away from that match. I felt really down afterwards, but the, the the next day and and right now, I feel there's a little bit of optimism just from the part of the performance. Obviously, there's there's big problems, but I just thought there was part of the performance that I don't know. The, the same with last weekend's Bournemouth, where you, you kind of go, there's there's something there to be worked out. Whether this manager's the right manager to get it out of the the team consistently, I don't know, but. It's it's grim, isn't it? Because it's five games, it's zero points, and it's mm. uh, it's looking grim. Ped, I mean, I I think I'm probably slightly different than Sam. I know but, you're slightly different. No, than Sam. No, I mean, because I've watched. <laughs> I did the watch the game yesterday. Mm. Everton got battered. They got battered. It should have been eight five. Villa missed so many good chances. What a random scoreline. Everton could have scored. No, but on chances, because we should have we should have definitely scored two Did you sit there going, that's a goal, that's a goal, no, that's a goal? No, but when people are putting it wide from yeah. four yards out, that's a chance. It's yeah. not like Everton played well. We're against Bournemouth. I think there was a case for we, hunt, mm. we 100% deserve to beat Bournemouth, I think, yeah. until the last sort of eight and nine. On Saturday, we, we yeah. didn't. But that being said, we... we as an away team, you sort of expect that, but the goals, mm. that first goal. No. What is Michael Michael Keane six foot four mm. or six foot three mm. and a half? Jumping five foot eight. How? I, I I can't get my head. How? 
Mm. I think that's that's the kind of goal, isn't it? That I imagine they've been working on all week in training, Everton defending that. Um, and it's yeah, it's pretty poor. It's a pretty poor goal. It I just think that... Sean Wright Phillips v Jolie and Lesh got back. Yeah, it was. It was. You know? It definitely did. But yeah. it's also the fact that it came from that sweet left foot of Luca Dean, and it still pisses me off every time I see him because you know we should never have let him go. Yeah. Thanks, Rafa. There is yeah. Thanks, Rafa. When people and I'm not digging anyone out here, but when people cry ass over. Losing Hammers Rodriguez, mm. he's the real one that they should be actually going on about. A player in his actually in his absolute. He's the peak. one that really hurts me. That yeah. that one, you know, a player in, in his time. peak. I really, I really rated uh, Luca Dean. Didn't want to go either. I played no, in his no. peak, playing playing for us, and and to be fair, has been and because because he because he replaced such a legend of Baines mm. and has been replaced by. Michalenko, who's nowhere near, nowhere near the, mm. the level of play. Like he, like on Saturday, you've seen the amount of times he got round the back of the fullback and makes it so effortless. I don't think I've ever seen Michalenko once do that in his Everton career. It's just not part it's of his skill set. Player, it's just not part of his skill set. Mm. And it's just, it's, it is. It's just like when you when you look at the transfer of power, say from like I'm not saying from Everton to Villa because we obviously haven't been up there for a while. But if you want to look at why Everton are in the position we are and why Villa are in the position they are, because they went and bought players like him from clubs like us mm. and and obviously weakened us. And goals like that are pathetic, as far as I'm concerned. Or Keane was pathetic. Mm. I thought the goalkeeper, as as Sam said, there could have done so much Clean better. Them both out. Yeah, she could have done so much better. Um. And yeah, once that went in, the feeling—I mean, I barely celebrated either either of our goals because I was just like, "Oh, this is interesting." Mm-hmm. Rather than mm-hmm. we're winning two 0 and that's a sad—that's a sad place to be in. Um, but to, it, listen, if you have to get to get, if you need to score three goals to get a point out of a game, then we're in a very sticky position—a very sticky position. Mm-hmm. The defense is all over the shop, mm-hmm. you know. And and if you've got to move your right back to left back. <laughs> Because your left back gets injured, that and he's not even your first choice right back. That's another massive. Issue. That's these are warning signs all over well, the, the warning, place. I mean, the warning signs just after Watkins scored, and this is what I mean, you know, without being and and I get stick for being Mister Positive uh, at times. I do, but I still look at this team and go, this team is good enough to be between eleventh and fourteenth easily. We've shown that in patches, but mm. what we're doing is crazy to me. Mm. And just after Villa scored, they played a straight ball through the middle, and Michael Keane had no clue that Rodgers was there, and he got mm. in behind him. And if his touch had been good, he'd have been two two yeah, within been, about yeah. two minutes of them scoring a goal, and and that two 0 lead would have been gone. Yeah, and it's those moments think... the equaliser when Jack Harrison stretches. People have had a go at Harrison. Mm. He's on the stretch trying to cut out the, the ball mm. in behind. Michael mm. Keane's got one job to do there. That's Mark Ollie Watkins, because they have one striker, mm. and he doesn't. He leaves him on his own. So the lad's mm. got to tap in for 2-2. Two, two. These things, and why the I manager's think, making these choices is think, on the manager think, really. Yeah. But I, I, there's just moments like that where I just think, what on earth are we doing? 13 goals we've conceded in four Premier League games for a defensive team is just blows my mind. But I think to support what Sam was saying, I think, Sam, if I sort of interpret it the right way, is that, Baz, w- without a doubt, and you're right, you know, and these these mistakes cost us, and ultimately it's to do with, with results at the end of the day. However, I think what Sam's trying to say, and I do understand it, is that as opposed to other times when we've sat here kind of going, do you know what? We offered nothing. We created mm-hmm. nothing. And we have been in that situation before. And the only bright spark in all of this, while the defensive unit is a shambles and has been resultant in obviously where we are now, but Mm. we are at least creating chances. We do have something going forward. We can score goals against good sides, you know? So again, looking at the brighter sparks, we are in a better position than we, uh, the, the league table wouldn't support it, but we're in a better position in terms of our play than we have been in other times. If, yeah, that's, that's, if, if you know, at the risk of sounding like Miss, and, and, and I don't normally bring positivity to the podcast <laughs> or anything, in fact. Um, but uh, that's me offering a little ray of positivity if that is indeed what you were sort of alluding to, Sam, which I think you kind of were. Yeah, I suppose so. And I just uh, let me correct myself. I said we've, we've played five and lost five, it's four, and we've lost four. So, crisis, what crisis? You just it's only missed four. the neck. It's not five. Mm, I'm just yeah, looking yeah. forward, it's not back. <laughs> but yeah, I, th- I mean, I suppose that's there's there's been a couple of occasions where I've actually 
got out my seat in the last couple of games when I've gone, oh, that was a nice little bit of play. I mean, that that quick passing that put Dom through, mm-hmm. but ultimately didn't he didn't finish off. That was that was great. That was I don't think I've seen a quicker passage of play from an Everton team in a, in a, a couple of years really. So stuff like that. But there, there's so many problems, you know, like mm-hmm. that that we've all sort of picked apart really. And I think the defensive side of it. And Michael Keane, I, I I really hate sort of pulling individuals out. And I, this is not me having a go at Michael Keane, the individual or the man, because he seems like a nice fella. Mm-hmm. But he's just tragically out of his depth at the moment. Mm-hmm. And he's, he keeps getting put back into the team. And it's not his fault he's getting picked. He's going to play. It's not like he's not trying hard. He mm-hmm. just hasn't got it. He can't read the game the way he needs to read it. He, he's not brave enough when he, when he should be brave. You can't make someone brave. He's just not... He's not got it, and that experiment with him has worked, has not worked again and again and again. And every season, it feels like every season, there's a sort of two month period where he plays and we ship goals, and then he finally comes off the team and things improve at the back. And it doesn't take a genius to work out that he's a big problem in the back of the back of the team. Do you think no, he's it's... got photos of Dyche somewhere? <laughs> I think he's Box got photos Island. of all the managers. I mean, there's got to be, there's got to be something. There's got to be, you know, because the, the relationship with with Michael Keane and Dyche is an odd one. Because I agree, no. because he should never be sty. No, he, he shouldn't. It it is it is a very He's... odd. I mean, yeah, but that's a. I think there's always something to to to. You always find something in every manager where you you can point at it and, and people go, well, they're doing a good job, or there's this issue or there's that issue with the club, and it's not his fault. There's always something with a manager where you can point at and go, yep, yeah, but he continues to do that. I remember with Martinez. He continued to play Tim Howard, and we all knew he was done. And Robles would have like three clean sheets and then was taken out the side. And it was like, we all know this player's done, but the manager just can't see it. And it's the same with it's the same now. He he can't see that Keane is a massive reason. I just think he there's no confidence in him from the players, it doesn't look like, and the fans, certainly. So you see the team sheet and straight away everyone's like, you only have to you look before the game and everyone looks and sees Keane's playing and just like Straight away, there's a negative feeling about about him playing, and it, that must get about. Michael Keane must be aware of that. You're right; he seems like a nice fella, but mm. he's not a particularly. He does. He's he's quite weak, isn't he? I'm a and nice he, fella. I can't play centre back. No, no, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, it's uh, um, uh, <laughs> maybe he, I can. You're maybe saying that, that maybe he could. I, I, I think that's mean. what he means. I'm saying maybe <laughs> Bass isn't a nice person, but could yeah, play no, centre back. I, I, nah, I think I was you're just in the minority. Pour sunshine on it again. No, I think you're the man. I think most people think I'm a nice person and will be terrible at centre back. Well, I, I like and to I book the this, trends. You do. I like to book the trends. You are the voice of the fans. I, I, I feel like I feel like you could do that job, and it is your your aggressive nature that is the reason why you will be such a good centre. You'd you be like me. a little Martinez who plays for I'd be, Man I'd, United. I'd be, I'd be Chris Perry, the rash. Chris I was, Perry. I was what a modern reference back. that is. Ter- yeah, because he was the last time there was a tiny <laughs> centre back. Matt, this is tiny. He's, he's not that tiny. He is probably eight foot bigger than me. He is. Um, I just think it's a. I just think it's a. It's such an obvious. We concede more than yeah. two goals a game yeah. when Michael Keane plays. That's yeah. just a fact. That's not one way or the other. But I mean, just going back to, you see, this was more alarming to me. Aston Villa aren't a hugely possession. Football side. Base side, yeah. And on Saturday, they've had 73% possession. Yeah. They've had 17 attempts at goal to six. Eight on target. Everton had two. Six off target. 665 passes to 240. Them numbers terrify me. And I'm not a big ticky tacky, we want the ball, but if you're giving those kind of figures up to a team that doesn't really play like that, mm. it tells you there's something massively wrong. I thought Jamie Carragher was spot on in his commentary on Saturday night, and I think he's a. I think, listen, I know, no Carragher anyway. Like away from it, Clang. I think he's a great pundit when he isn't talking about Liverpool. And when he talks about Liverpool, he's a he's a he's just ridiculous. But I think he's a really good pundit. But on Saturday, what he said was right. Whether you like him or not, you have to admit that. He was saying Everton don't need to play like this. They are better than what they are doing. He said Aston Villa aren't a team that loves the ball. And Everton are just giving them the ball back and going, you have it. You cannot. If Everton's MO is to sit on the edge of their box and hope for nil 
for mm. the opposition. Mm. We're in massive trouble. It'll work, mm. don't get me wrong. There'll be the odd game and it works because the opposition can't score. But if you just keep giving the ball back and go and come again then and see if you can get through us this mm. time, it's not going to work. No one plays like this anymore. And therefore, and this, I suppose, like what Sam was saying and Dave's done the same, is those moments when Everton did try to play, they cut through them. Mm. So yeah. like Carragher was saying, why aren't you mixing it more then? Why aren't you doing that a bit more? You know, because we proved we can do it. Mm. We, I've said this to you the other week when people tell you this team, they're not good enough, they can't do this, they, they couldn't play football. Well, I watched bloody League 2 Doncaster come to Goodison the other week and play us off the park. In the first 45 minutes, we're passing football. So don't give me any of that nonsense that elite footballers can't pass the ball about because Everton did it to what I regard as a very good football side at the weekend. We cut through them like they weren't there when we actually tried to play a little bit mm. of pass and move. Don't have to do it all the time. Don't have to be obsessed with the ball. But stop playing long balls up to a centre forward and then hoping he can keep hold of it with three defenders mm. until he gets a bit mm. of support. They've got, to, they've got to do something slightly different, Ped. Otherwise, we will keep getting these results and, and we're going to be in massive, massive trouble when we shouldn't be. Because prior to the first goal, they'd had something like 81% possession on mm. the, the stats at that point, which is yeah. why uh, McNeil's goal, I mean, it came completely against the runner play. Mm. Yeah, I, personally, I thought their keeper should have had it as well. I thought it was a bit soft. But anyway, but it was complete. But you're right, Buzz, because we had just been sitting there Kind of going, right, okay, come at us again, come mm. at us again. We'll just do what we do. But there was nothing going forward no. until that point. But that, that's that's the manager's MO, isn't it? I mean, to yeah. be the to be devil's um, avocado. Um, nice. He, um, what would you have with devil's avocado? I've never had avocado in my life. Okay. It's 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 it bypasses my house and goes straight to the straight to the gated communities. Okay. So it never, it never reaches, never reaches my house. <laughs> um, just doesn't get I don't, there. I don't like it very much. It, I, it, I find it, it a bit soft and squishy. I believe you can only sell it to people who've got heated floors. I can't. <laughs> <never>. <laughs> what do you mean you can't have it? Saying that though, Baz, I'm saying that though. I have got heated floors. I should say that. Um, I haven't. I wish I. You have. You have. Before. You have people that you employ just to blow hot. Blow on the floor. Well, that's a just so it's warm that's for you. Heated from that's people. It's not, not for the heat, though, is but it? But to be fair, um, I will let you off because apparently on all your videos this weekend, there was a, just a chirping. It's sort of. It's a chirping <laughs> of a fire alarm we'll going back, off. We'll come back to that. Okay. Um, Smoke alarm, by the way, not fire alarm. It's a different thing. Is it? School. Mm. Yeah. Okay. When there is a fire, there was no fire. I think Moise, Moise, I just got Moise on the mind. <laughs> oh, that's how don't tempt me. How, how don't weird. Tempt me. So it's a oh, um, split. I just think that for him, he and I'm surprised he didn't say this after the game, knowing him, is that he would he would have said we had them contained or we stopped their counter attack, and mm. actually it took a worldy to beat us. Okay, even though they'd already got behind us and Ollie Watkins should have had a tap in for the attack, but I I imagine that's what the manager would have said. We had these contained; they weren't playing the counter attack. But that goes back to what you were saying. It, it, that's what the football's all about, isn't it? Containment. Mm. We don't go. And attack teams and put our the way we play on them. We rely on set pieces or Dwight McNeil maybe doing what he did for the goal, which mm. we've seen before. Yeah, which you know, pressing high, taking the ball That's off them, position, and then the hopefully way. smacking one in. Mm. But there has to be, there has to be more. Yeah. There has to be whether you think this team's good enough or not. Mm. There has to be more from this team to say. You know, you look at other teams. And you, the way they play, and you, you see a manager go in there and say to me, he's saying, this is the way I want to play. Mm. This is the way you will play. doesn't matter whether you look good enough. I will make you good enough. Mm. And I still mm. believe that Sean Dyche, whether you like him or whether you don't like him, is still in this very, very much... And I know you say, I can see you shaking your head there. Mm. Um, is very much in this mode of... A, he's got this permanent way, which is... A psychology is there's three months left of the season and we need to earn X amount of points to stay up. And I just don't think that's a way to do things at the beginning of a season. Surely at the beginning of every season, that you can't start the season by going, 
right, this is the way we're going to play all season and that's going to keep us up. Surely you've got to come out and be and say, no, no, that's 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 the emergency way of doing things. That's if you need to stay up and you've got 10 games Plan left B. and you have to suddenly throw throw away doing it. I, I, I can understand why fans hate this way of playing playing football and this mentality of, not that we're beaten, just this mentality of, and I don't know if you feel it, it's like we are looking like a team that is like straight from the start. Oh, it looks like relegation because, yeah, because look at the football. The football is emergency. You know, it's mm. break the glass. Mm, yeah. It's break the glass, isn't it, for emergency. It's what you'd expect from him if he came in in February. Mm. We shouldn't be doing that in, in August, in September. We should be trying to play football. This idea of what we spend so summer trying to get the players fit instead of trying to put a style on them, I don't, I don't understand that. I don't understand this mentality at the football club, which is running through the football club. We know this. There's a mentality running through the football club of it will all be all right once we get to the new stadium. All we're doing is getting to the new stadium. Nothing else matters. Mm. Be in the Premier League. That's a mentality that we know for a fact runs through the club at the moment. Mm. And I think that's blinding people. I really do think it's blinding people to, no, no, we can play football. We do have a couple of plays who can open things up. Dominic Calvin-Lewin looks a much better footballer, regardless of misses or not, when the mm. ball is being played through the channels mm. and into his feet mm. and it's not being smashed diagonally mm. at him. Mm. And I think that's yeah. something he's going to have to, if he wants... If he wants to get players back on, uh, sorry, fans back on side, maybe some players back on side, he's gonna have to say, right, we are. And you're right; it's, it's not. No one's asking us to play off from the back. I don't think any of us want to see us playing off the back. But we've got to see a bit more of that one touch, two touch football mm -hmm. going through, going through the pitch. I just think if you keep the ball a little bit more, yeah. you've got a bit more control of the game. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not nine hundred passes, Martinez. Because I hated that Everton football as well, because that was the opposite of it. We went nowhere, and we mm. ended up winning the possession most times. That's not what I'm saying, but we can do more well, than what we're doing. And we, how we many can't times? sit on the edge of our box and hope that the opposition don't score a goal. Because that, it, to mm. me, it, you're just waiting for them to score. I was saying this to my dad watching, I was like, we're just waiting for them to score. Mm. And it's just attack v defence. Mm. Mm, you like know that's all session. it was, and, and, and that yeah. to me isn't a way to play. But well, how many times on this podcast have we we've had discussions about you can have a dour, frustrating style of play if it's mm. effective, not mm. even effective one hundred percent of the time. If it's effective, God, fifty percent of the time it'd be yeah. too much. If it's effective thirty five percent of the time, you'll, yeah, you'll stay up, won't you? Mm. But it's got to be effective, and I know we're only four games in, but it's it's just there's so much negativity from the way the manager. It's clearly instructing the players to to kind of you know process the ball and just the shape that they're adopting. It just mm. I, I would love I would love to see this squad with a different manager. I, I really would. And when you accidentally said Moyes before, I was like, please. And it's weird to, to be in that situation when I'm yearning for David Moyes to come back. But I just think there's been loads of clips shared on on Twitter this week of like mm. you know there was a, a great Tim Kale uh, Tim Kale um like super cut of all his best uh, goals it's the old Barclays like, man isn't it oh uh, is that <laughs> what it, that's what it is it's getting us nostalgic isn't it the old uh, Barclays man clips it was brilliant and I was uh, watching it going oh, David remember. in his heyday on Radio because... One in the afternoon <laughs> oh I had a full that's... head of blonde hair you know it's wonderful I look like Hulk Hogan. It was a great time to be alive. But we don't we don't need much as Everton fans. Like if you've got a player who puts a good tackle in once a game, we'll build a statue for that player. Mm -hmm. Because that's you know, and if you get a couple of goals and get on a bit of a streak, we you know, cult heroes we are desperate for. And it's uh, it's yeah. it, it just feels like a million miles away at the moment. I thought Matt Jones put a good tweet out. Matt Jones from the Echo and um, the Blue Room. If a Sean Dyche team can't hold on to leads and concede less than three goals in a game, then there's really not much point of Sean Dyche being around. And I thought that summed it up perfectly. Mm. You know, this is a team that was being win was uh, has won one nil. That's been the backbone of his as time mm. at Everton. One nil wins, taking the lead and holding on to the lead. Not enough of them. And yet we're in a situation where we're getting two nil leads, and all of us are looking at going. We're not going to keep hold of this, mm. and you know, and that that's that's a mentality thing that can that can stay with the next. If we get yeah. the next time we get two nil up, yeah, that'll set me and clock shall I for the uh, the future. But 
it feels like if we get 2-0 up, what's it going to feel like? Because I remember after we conceded the two late goals to Newcastle, for a while it felt like that, didn't it? Mm. Every time we went 2-0 up, you were just yeah. terrified. Well, the opposition get it. You're never beaten, are you? No. If you see a team that can't keep a lead, they get ahead, you just think, we just get one, these will go. Mm. It's all Villa thought, Saturday. Villa yeah. just thought, get one back before half time. If you're in that crowd, you'd have been thinking, get one back before half time. It's mm. game on, are you? Yeah. You should do it at home. With teams, yeah. If if we went behind, and sadly it was probably like Moises era and stuff. But if you went behind, you think get one back here. Yeah, yeah. we're, and we're, we're right it. back in it. We're it's right back in it. Just the, mentality, isn't we're it? now. You can see the the petrified but mentality. Anyway, let's just leave it there because it's depressing. Another defeat. <laughs> Another defeat. It is what it is. This is being recorded before Everton play Southampton in the Carabao Cup, of course. And then obviously we go to Leicester at the weekend, which is a massive game. To the mm-hmm. football club and the manager, I think, because Leicester, are, Leicester are going to be down there, but the score and goals, so it's going to be a tough one. It's a game Everton can win, but they're going to have to defend properly because. What are, I mean, you know. Dave? What if we lose that game on Saturday? I mean, what are you? The, the thing is, at the moment, and and to sort of to answer what you're saying, it's the compound situation week on week that concerns me at the moment. Mm. Because mm. the longer this goes on, the more that panic sets in, you know, amongst the fans and the mm. squad and everything. And then, you know, and that pressure, which nobody displays that pressure on his face quite like Michael Keane walking out of a tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? That look. Like any it, tunnel, it, it's like if he comes well, out, like if he comes like the Mersey to or the tunnel of yeah, love, does yeah, he have yeah. like a face of like, oh my god, Ooh, what's, I've just that, been the winner and absolutely. I haven't even got a fast tag. <laughs> um, <laughs> absolutely, gonna get I've done just, by had AM. Be, just had to go to Bacon Head. What's going on? I'll be done by AMPR <laughs> before I even get home. <laughs> um, yeah, and that's that's what can that's what concerns me. But when you look at the games coming up, I mean. They're all winnable. Mm. You know, we haven't got a horrendous streak in front of us. You know, there's some winnable, there's some winnable games. There's there's definitely points there, unless you're that side that loses every week. Um, oh, well. So I just I have to be hopeful yeah. that when the first win comes and it will have to come at some point, one would assume, mm-hmm. that that will be a bit of a reset and will give people the, the confidence that, that is needed. Um, but the longer this goes on, it will, it, will affect, it will affect the mood in the squad, and then that's what then makes us less prepared, for example, for the trip to Leicester on Saturday than we would have been had we, for example, won Saturday just gone, you know? Yeah. If we'd, if we'd won 2-1 or something like that, we'd have actually gone, right, do you know what? We haven't been playing dreadfully. We've been making a lot of mistakes, but we've actually had something going forward. We finally got the points that we deserved. Now our season starts. On we go. Bring on Leicester. But yeah. we don't now. And mm. it's a mentality. It's, it's here. It's, it's not in the feet. I, I just like, sorry, I just want to, because you mentioned fixtures. Yeah, I just like the fact that the Premier League have moved the Manchester United game, uh, the away game, into December. So that now in December, we now face Manchester United, Wolves, Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea, Manchester City, and Nottingham Forest. I just, Happy Christmas. I just like the fact that, yeah, yeah, lads, that's, Winter. it's not in November. Just put that in December and we can put that mm. in your Christmas calendar. At time of recording, there is nine months to the day that Everton actually last won a Premier League away game. Which was at Burnley, so there you go. And in that was nine that, so months... I, so that was the day the shite, you... shite was conceived. Mm. In, in, and also, what you'd have to say is it's nine months to the day and Everton have won five games of football since then, so there you go. Happy times. Well, someone, what are we all moaning for? Someone said to me... You've been too happy, Baz. That's exactly. I told you, you know. he was a better centre-back. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Let's get on to the happy, the happiness. Is the happiness. There's got to be happiness. Let's let's talk about other stuff. Okay. Other stuff. My, fi- my smoke alarm, which is uh, mm. basically the story of the smoke alarm is we've got a main smoke alarm just when we got the extension done years and years and years ago it's just not a ba- it's like not a battery one it's just off the runs off the electric but each of them have a battery in of right it is. so the other day it starts beeping just like mm. chirping so it's like like the battery needs replacing in the emergency battery so 
turn the electrics off because you'd have to do that. This Who the Jeeves? Me. <laughs> the electrics off. Disconnected it. Put the new battery in. Put it back up. A lot mains back on. Went downstairs a few minutes later. The budgie's back in the bleeding smoke alarm. So, like, okay, what's that? a euphemism. No, that's what sounded like a budgie. Um, I mean, what a weekend. Call it, call it what you want. And, uh, the budgie's back in the smoke. The budgie's back in. So, I was like, okay, this isn't great. So, I've done it again. Thought I mustn't have connected the battery properly. It's got to be my fault. Blah, mm. blah, blah. Do it again. It's still going. So, you're online, aren't you? On, on the line. Having a look, you know. You should replace this, replace that. And you get a load of things of like, you know, I tapped it three times and it stopped working. It was perfect. And Isn't that you know, how you stop a can of Coke from fizzing over? Yeah. Tap, and, <laughs> and lager, by the way, if you wanted the can of lager. Or the alcoholic fizziness probably works as well. Anyway, long and short of it is it, it, none of it was working. No. So it was like, no. right, I need a new, obviously need a new, going to have to get a new smoke alarm, whatever. It's going on. It's so annoying, the noise all night, you know, every three minutes or something the fucking bed yeah. you know so when i'm doing my maths reaction yeah you can hear it in the background mm. and obviously mm. i told this story last week so people in yeah. the comments are like yeah don't know what's worse evidence defense or bass of smoke <laughs> and whatever but my brother-in-law come yesterday just called him for something he's a fireman i was gonna say that's quite handy yeah. he's a fireman so i was like mm. he'll know mad. a thing about smoke alarms won't well he? yeah he's not, a good center back as well he was a good center mm. back mm. better michael Keane put it that way um and event, you know, so we go up and, fix, you know, he takes it off and all, and he's like, just disconnect. We're still talking about the smoke alarm. The smoke alarm. <laughs> Not fucking full Monty or something. Um, so we just disconnect. He went, just disconnect it because yeah. the others will work fine. And also, it's overtime for him if anything happens, isn't it? Movies. Exactly. You know? Exactly. But uh, he then said, but sometimes if you just leave it off for five minutes, it resets. Okay. So you put the new one in. Getting the smoke long, alarm. Long, yeah. tall, Again, and yeah. short, if it is. <laughs> Yeah. He left it, put it back in, it's yeah. all fixed. So there is there no people. For now. Did you not try whispering into it sometimes? Yeah. I, well, I might try that because some of the some of the suggestions, Sam, were things yeah. like couldn't that, you, have, you know. Can you have blown three times? I was gonna say, couldn't you have blown on it like it was a PS2? <laughs> <laughs> in the fan. Getting the disc and getting the hair dryer. Mm. That was another mm. one, the hair dryer. I was Isn't just it? gonna go I was just gonna Google blow three times, but I'm not gonna do it. No, no, don't, I, Dave, I don't I would not But I was just <laughs> thinking there while we were talking I was just thinking, is there a mar- I mean if we mi- is there a massive market maybe that people have missed out on here for, for like because in this day and age you can talk into you know Alexa and all that. Mm. Is it not like a is it is there should should there be like a voice programmable voice that you could put on your f- smoke alarms that because you can imagine certain voices when mm. that goes off, that because could you imagine instead of chirping, it was just Ned going, Hello, hello, that hello, a... you'd get number one if there was a fire that would get you up, instantly, get you up. wouldn't it? Get you and also, that's it would... to sell the house, and yeah. also, yeah, like a poltergeist that being mm. there, <laughs> and also, number two, that would have got you to change the battery much quicker if all you heard was I changed hello, it quite hello, quick. Hello. I, changed it quite I know, quick. but it was chirping during video, felt unprofessional. Yeah, we got, yeah, we got a new, we we got new smoke alarms in our house. We got, again, smoke alarms. Mm. we got new smoke alarms in our house yeah. and uh, I was made up because I was like, yeah, dead safe. But one of them is so sensitive. Mm. It's typical. It's like the youth of today, just sensitive yeah. about everything. Yeah. And I got in and I was bladdered and I was making cheese on toast and everyone was in bed. And Feels like it's perhaps, your fault. But perhaps I left the cheese on toast for a little bit too long and mm. yeah, basically all the smoke alarms went off. Oh, and son. the kids didn't wake up, but my wife was, you know, quite rightly fuming at me. Yeah. But, um, I blame the smoke alarm, and she, I mean, she blamed me. That's fair mm. enough, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I feel like there should be like a set just doing just... its job. Well, yeah, but it, it was just a little bit of cheese, you know? But there should be settings where you can maybe, like, you know, voice activate, activate like, some kind of, like, you know. But you wouldn't have even to... been able to speak. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're barely able to speak now. <laughs> I'm not talking about it, the flashbacks. Smoke alarm, it's just cheese on toast. Lad, yeah, it's just that. Red Leicester, shut up. <laughs> it wouldn't be Red Leicester with Sam. Might be. You don't know his cheese taste. Well, hang on, I've got people coming in, blowing on me floor to make the floor warm. Exactly, so you don't I know. Think, Sam, I what kind of, Sam's having What kind some. of cheese was it, Sam? I think it was a hodgepodge of, uh, like, I think there was a bit of Red Leicester in yes, there. Yes, thank you. My wife sometimes buys that 50% fat cheese, which if you feel better for doing it, Mm. But then it doesn't it doesn't melt properly. Maybe that's what caused the flames, and yeah. therefore that's because fifty percent of it's lard. 
well, yeah, it's not it's not <laughs> healthy yeah. anyway, is it? So, yeah, chemicals. but it was uh, there was there was fireworks between me and my wife that night. But that fair way. play, well, fair mm. play. Safe. And did the smoke alarms go off again? Then safety first. smoke alarm didn't go off for that. No, no. Yeah, the budgie oh, was back in this. <laughs> it was the budgie <laughs> was the chirping there was, away. There was chirping no budgie away. for that. No. Of course. Telling you there should be a market for that, just getting the most annoying person to just. Yeah, but when it I does, I can make it... a clear out of that. No, but when it does it, like mm, mm. it's just a battery needing yeah. replacing, but you you replace the battery and it's still doing it because yeah. the residual in. You'd want to smash the my, alarm. My, my Your voice is there going, "What well, I'm giving Dwight McNeil three out of ten, even though he's Pele." You'd just be smashing it off the ceiling, wouldn't you? I think I made Michael Keane man of the match on Saturday. Michael Keane? Well yeah, sorry, done. So we'll have you doing play it right. Dwight McNeil was man of the match. Well, sorry, was yeah. my man of the match as well. well. And I've just done a man of the match on quite clearly. Um, but yeah, there you go. Mm. There you go. One other thing I wanted to ask was... <laughs> no, I'm you know, lighten the, the mood of the show because, mm. you know, we've got to talk about football for the rest of the day and I don't really want to after that. Um, if you could hang out with a cartoon character, which one would you pick? <laughs> In what sense, hang out? Just like chill for the day. Okay. If you could have one in here for the day. It means yeah. hang out yeah. with, not hang out of. Yeah. <laughs> mm. um, to be fair, we are, get, we are getting into a, Vel- Velma season. Well, we are. <laughs> to be fair. Talking of what they've the got season. Tis Tis the, the season. season. Velma season. Velma Instagram. It has, it has become very much the... Um, uh, the character of choice for on many on Instagram on, and yeah. Halloween. It has, yeah. Uh, who wants to go first then? Uh, Betty Rubble. Okay. Do you want to give <laughs> us some context? For what reason? Yeah, I was going to say, well, for what reason? Well, so, I mean, what are we talking about? I suppose. Just anything, in, come on. If, if, if there's. If, she was probably the only cartoon character that I thought was attractive. Okay. Mm. You know, I can't yeah. really think of many other cartoon characters that I found. Attractive. Penelope Pitstop was quite a fox. Yeah. So I suppose maybe Betty Rubble. But in terms of who else would I like to hang out with? Captain Caveman. Yes. Feel, now, feel, Captain Caveman was good. I feel Captain like Caveman was good. I feel like me and Captain Caveman have got similar sensibilities. Similar traits. Mm. Similar yeah. sensibilities. I think we get on like a house on fire. Quite, quite we went late. to your I, house. Ironically, yeah. Well, I hope the smoke <laughs> alarms are working then. If we went to your house, you'd be all right. Be all right. He'd be dumbfounded by the heated floors and the gates. Mm. But but I think after it'd be okay. Once you get past that, he'd be yeah. fine. But yeah. just explain what it's Captain for. Caveman was a was was was. I mean, he didn't really do anything. No. He just went berserk now and again. Mm, he must have like been uh, easy to to write because there wasn't much depth there. I must no. admit, mm. wasn't much too no, much was, depth. He was a very angry man, wasn't he? Very <laughs> he was. yeah, yeah childhood. I believe but, head uh, and caveman's I, player right but he was a he was like well i mean what how did he get to the rank of captain i mm. mean what 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 was he in you know he's a caveman how did he, he get to the like, rank of captain himself caveman, was he yeah, but, i mean you know, petty you know, officer caveman he yeah. just made Corporal himself caveman yeah. <laughs> it was his own rules he doesn't seem like a guy a guy who lives by rules no, though he doesn't. he doesn't he doesn't look like a captain does he no, no. He no, it doesn't look like a captain. You can't maybe it's like an honorary armband. term, you know, like like some royals get honorary titles. Maybe Is that like what it that. was? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he hasn't actually earned the stripes. I I think I'd like to hang around with Mister Tickle. Okay, mm. interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't I mean, know I mean, it's, it's it's it sounds like an HR issue. To I was going to say. <laughs> I was going to say. I mean, you, yeah. I mean, at so, some corporations, you might be fine. They might might look at you mm. and keep an eye on you, but <laughs> but um. Not, yeah, but it, some well, corporations. No, but if he's not, if Sam's not doing the tickle, the tickling, is there someone called Sam uh, Tickle? I feel like there is. But if Sam was not doing, there was John Lord of the Rings, John Tickle, Sam who Tickle, was was. Big Brother years ago, and, and, and he was a twin. John Tickle had a twin. Okay, he was obviously called something else, Tickle. But the two of them, but he I wouldn't mean, be called John. <laughs> would he? I mean, they had a different they name. Them John. No, but they, yeah, they, they were two different people with two different names. Well, yeah, ironically, they two different people? ironically, they looked identical. Well, they, you that's know. generally what identical it, twins are, Dave. I mean, yeah. the, the clues normally, mm-hmm. you know, when the name John Tickle. Is, Baz, had, I'm, I'm not, I'm not wanting to take Mister Tickle around with me to like sort of be a pest by proxy. I okay. just think he could tickle me if I was feeling down. Cheer me oh. up. Mm. Okay. You could tickle people 
who were who were wanting to be tickled would have to yeah. have a, you know a strict. You'd have to fill a form in. You do, yeah, you, you'd you, have would, to. you need a consent form. A consent, a consent form. form. You'd have to have, go through all those. We'd have a HR department uh, yeah. on site, I think. And then also, I'm thinking with his long arms, he could reach stuff like your smoke alarm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and change the mm-hmm. change the battery if needed. Absolutely. Give it a he might have read Luke look at Dean's cross as well yeah. on Strathy. Oh my God. He'd be a great think, goalie. I just think there's mm-hmm. issues there. I just think there's issues straight away. It was like, only, it's only for a day. That you're knocking around with missing. Sam can tickle. just do it for a day and then go, I don't know, it wasn't my I just, I just worry, I disappeared. I just worry about that. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, got, it's got ITV drama written all over it. It really has, <laughs> it's hasn't it? It's the association pen, platform isn't it? seven. Yeah, it's, the, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a four it's a four day event with a documentary on the Friday night that no one mm. really watches. Do you know mm. what I mean? <laughs> Coming to I, I, you know, ITVX, you know, Mr. I Tink. Think- Mr. Tickle played by the same fella who played the fella in the post office drama, you know what I mean? Because okay. he can, he oh, can he, play he up. Did. Yeah, he can play either way, do you know yeah. what I mean? He, well, he I'd love to play. see a live action version of the Mr. Men and Mr. Tickle's like a real mm. person. That would be yeah. horrific. It would be, I mean, I don't know that deep. It would be, be I mean, that's the thing about like cartoon characters, if they came into real life, mm. they are, they do look like disformed monsters. Mr. Bump would be net though, wouldn't he? <laughs> Ned's mm. always carrying some sort of injury yeah, or is, not. He's he limping is. or he's... he's yes. uh, there's always something. Ned mm. would be a good Mr. Bump, yeah. I think. I'm like, going to go for... Um, Mr. I'm, Lazy Jack. I'm go- what well, do you think? Mr. Haircut. I'm going to go for um, uh, Mrs. Fantastic, Elastigirl. Girl. Uh, yeah. 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 I'm just going to leave it there. Yeah. Everybody, yeah. you know... No explanation needed. There's no explanation the needed. Boots. There's just... It's oh. just, just just no. do many different roles. Many... I regret my choice. This is no, incredible as well. Mr. Mr. Incredible. This is incredible. But I just said that. You said Mr. Fan... Mrs. Fantastic. No, I said Mrs. Incredible. Said Mrs. Fantastic. Oh, but you, I, you I... did say Mrs. Fantastic. Uh, no, you said, Mrs. know what's mad though? She, when you said not Mrs. Fantastic, I took that oh, as Mrs. That's... Incredible. I've, I've, Hence why I said yeah, the boots. I've, I've lost that there. Well, that's, See, I've, I... I've been with you too long because now yeah. when you get it wrong, I still know yeah. what you mean. Yeah. That's yeah. terrifying. That's... I didn't um, really know who Mrs. Fantastic was, but I didn't sorry. want to show my it, level yeah, of that's, ignorance. Yeah, that's just That's poor from me. That's poor. That's poor. I feel like I have to re-record that whole piece, but yeah, Miss, Mrs. 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 Incredible, incredible yeah. yeah. Last again. Well, I'm, I'm there with the Incredible. Yeah, yeah. I feel like Homer Simpson would be funny. I think mm. sitting with Homer, just seeing the cogs go round in his head, would be interesting. Yeah, no. I think. And John Blaine brings bevies in, so Mister Incredible, mm. you know, Homer could sit there in the uh, drinking out of the fridge, couldn't he? Not you for know? me. Not for no. me. I think he'd be interesting. I just can't get day. past Sam and Mister Tickle. I think there's something deep in that. <laughs> I think that we need to tickle the tickle by someone you didn't want rooted. to. I don't want anyone to tickle me. <laughs> Tickling's a, like it's, I think Everton should have to face Mr. Tickle horrible. on a Monday morning. I don't think and have to I, be I, tickled. I, 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 I think but, that's yeah. the punishment. Forget wages. Fine and two weeks' wages. Yeah. Just got to get t- Michael Keane, Tarkovsky, get in here 10 minutes Early to get bath. tickled. I don't want to preempt anything, but if a I was ever caught in like uh, some kind of country that Tickling I shouldn't ground. be in, like North mm. Korea or somewhere. Oh. Mm. And they wanted to forget taking me teeth out or pulling me fingernails out. If they tickle mm. under my arms, mm. I am telling mm. them the fucking state secrets. What about the feet? I am telling what them. What about feet? Feet are more right. It's under the arms. I'm telling them everything. I'm okay. telling them where all the bodies are buried. Okay. I'm telling them the lot. Do you know where bodies are? I know where all the bo- okay. bodies are buried. I'm telling them everything. Okay. okay. Everything. I'm telling them who Harry's dad is. I'm telling them the lot. It's all coming okay. out. It's Let's all not coming anyone out. Anyone else comment mm. on that? Um, you like if someone's like just before they tickle, like just the thought of the tickle. When yeah, I'm, sort of I'm, like... I'm gonna I'm gonna punch oh. them. I'm gonna punch them in the head, <laughs> even if it's a small child. Yeah, but I'm gonna sh- then hold you down and double tickle you because you've you've struck one. But at least I've struck them first. At least I've got my at least I've got my blow in first. Okay. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go Captain Caveman on them, or even Petty Officer Caveman on them, mm. or even to be fair, that was a while ago. He might be Admiral. Caveman by now, Maybe. He's, which basically makes him himself. eligible to be in an insurance advert. But the, real, the reality is, though, Ped, that you could get both of those early blows in and be two blows up, actually, and still end up losing that tickle contest 3-2 <laughs> in the end yeah. in a, in, you know, because yeah. of a, a lack of, of mental stability and strength. I, Dave, I think you, <laughs> you That's right. That's it. right. I've just, two blows up sounds like a podcast recorded mm. by Katie Price. Yeah. You are, yeah <laughs> all their, absolutely. All their accesses are available, of course. Um, Lads, have you got any other topics you want to throw in in this random section? Well, I wanted to talk about something that happened to me the other week because oh. I was out on a bike ride, right? 
and I'd not been out on a bike ride for a while. It was mm. a nice day. I thought, I'm going to go and stretch my legs and go out on a little bike ride. And 10 miles in... How can you stretch your legs to... if you're on a bike ride? Well, you know what I mean. It's just a figure of speech. The legs. Okay. Sort of, you okay. know, get, get the legs moving yeah. and whatnot. Bit of fresh air through the nostrils and set myself free. So anyway, so I'm 10 miles in. And uh, stupidly, I don't have a puncture repair kit, which no. was the wrong day because I got myself a puncture. I decided to overtake an old lady, and 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 rather than <laughs> right, so I'm, I'm on a. That's not a euphemism either. Right? <laughs> I'm on this. I'm on this path. I'm off the road. I'm on this path. It's a, like a sort of concrete path, and there's this old lady in front of me. I don't know how old, but I'm just sort of noticing that she's grey and she looks old. And I thought, well, there's two options here. Either I go up behind her and ring my bell. Again, not a euphemism. Um, yeah. But I thought that that might startle her, and I thought yeah. that that wouldn't mm. be fair. So I thought then the other Put option the is, just, is just, oh, like, I could have tickled her. Mm. And then the other option is just to sort of go slightly off the road bit and then back around and overtake oh, her without causing any alarm. However, at the point at which I did this, it was under a bridge Oh. Like a road bridge, and the sort of place yeah. where I'd imagined youths to hang out, drinking mm. alcohol and smoking and vaping or whatever like that. Mm. And yeah. as I did it, I thought this is a really stupid place to be going off road because this is just the sort of place that you get lots of broken glass. And oh. indeed, literally minutes after that thought, suddenly I felt that things were a little soft around my bottom. Again, right. not a euphemism, but I mean nope. in terms of like behind. It was a bit soft behind me. It was okay, a bit more, never a good sign that day. A bit more, never a, a good bit sign. More spongy and, <laughs> yeah. and whatever. Katie and Price said that on the on the podcast. She, she does. Yeah. yeah. So so anyway, so sure enough, I had a puncture and I didn't have a puncture repair kit. So the only thing that I could do was to was to try and uh, pull off the road um, at an opportune <laughs> yeah. moment. Right. This is like and a carry on film, isn't, isn't it? I, Go on. I then rang my sister to come and recover the bike and me, right? Because I don't have a puncture repair kit. So there's yeah. little else I can do other than get picked up. Anyway, so she does that. She says, yeah, no problem. I'll be there. I'll be 20, 25 minutes. And indeed yeah. she was. So in that 20, 25 minutes, I'm sat on the wall outside this community center by a row of shops. And I think it's fine. I'm dressed in, in Lycra. I look like a bit of a tit, but it's fine. I'm going to be gone in about 25 minutes. And then about five minutes into this process, these three teenage girls no. on horses, as in each girl was on one, one girl, one horse. Okay. Right? okay. Three horses are, are ridden by three teenage girls. Yeah. yeah. This was also so on Katie Blaze's podcast. Up and they decide to dismount their horses no and they tie them up to like a railing outside this community center there was a disabled ramp for access and a railing that accompanied it and therefore they decided to tie their horses to the railing now they were also talking about going into the shop and buying can you get me a, a lemon and lime crystal bar now because i'm the owner of a teenager i know that this is vape speak right oh, a, oh, a crystal okay. bar is a type of vape so they were going in to buy vapes were these teenage girls as is a teenage girl's what seemingly right so they go into the shop and as they're approaching the shop they get about halfway there and then one of them kind of looks around at the horses they're a little bit unsure having left them there on their own mm. so they turn around to me and they said are you going to be here for a while? And oh I said, well, yeah, God. I'll be here for the next five or 10 minutes. And they said, brilliant. Can you look after the horses for us or keep an eye on the horses? For us? <laughs> and I said, yes, no problem. So then they disappeared into the shop for however long they're going to be. But it was just that realization that at that moment, I thought I'm in charge, right? I'm only 40 years old. I'm in charge yes, of, course. of one adult bike and three adult horses. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, if anything happens to any one of these horses, what on earth am I going to do? Dressed in skin-tight lycra as well, by the way. Right? If one of them decides to kind of, you know, break its moorings and go charging down the road, I'm technically in charge of you are. three horses, mm. right? Which is a lot. So I suppose my question to you is, and the, re well, the reason for this story was, mm -hmm. when was the last time that each of you have felt very much out of your depth? <laughs> okay, now, every day. Uh, That's incredible. That's just, I mean, that what a different world. Like, was, was, will you mind me horse for me, exactly, mate? Exactly, yeah. Mm. yeah. You know, mm. that's a different world. I would world. have grabbed the chair like a lion tamer. Stay back, like Gandalf. Mm. <laughs> back horses. Back, even like, you horses, didn't even like, have the horsepower of the bike to be able to chase the horse, said horse, did you? Mm. This is it, because it was flat um, as a pancake. Have we, have we... I felt out of me depth Go on. A part of that story because I was trying to do a potential euphemism count and I got up to about yeah. 300 and I couldn't mm, keep yeah. up anymore. <laughs> anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Three horses and a bike. I mean, that was yeah. out in the 80s. I Again, that very Max. much could be part of Katie Price's podcast. Or others, like I said. No, mainly um, is. 
have you go ahead, Ped, have you if there have been a time where you've been put in that predicament like Dave? Not mm. necessarily with the same, you know, horses and bike and whatever, but that predicament where you've thought, I might have bitten off more than I can chew here if anything yeah. goes awry. If everything stays stable, you're fine. You're chewing it up a villa <laughs> and stable. the goalkeeper catches the cross. You're fine. Or you centre back heads it away. Did you like the stable thing, Dave? I Is think, that I what think they... we're well aware. I think we're well aware we caught that. Okay, sorry. Sorry. I was making hay while the sun shines. Um, mm. Is there anything. Thank you. Anything like that where you've thought, I, yeah. Could, there could be an issue here if anything arises. Um, oof. Sam, not, you should be thinking. Well, off the top of me, yeah. I've, I mean, I've got one. I remember you taking your you, your, got, you, your niece and nephew out once, and you said you were a little bit. Was it your niece and nephew, or was it just random people that found? Probably no. Was mm. it um, you took your is it Aiden and this, has Aiden got a sister? I remember mm. you saying once you went out and you were a bit. It was a bit of an eye opener what they were behaving like. Not yeah, bad, were, but were, just a bit. You know. They were 25. Well, they're exactly um, ungrateful when you were buying them things. I think or... it's slightly worrying that I, in a former life, I one of the jobs I had was the safety for, of passengers on a train. That is terrifying. That's you know, worse than <laughs> all of the passengers. All of the passengers. All of the passengers on were you. my were, was on me. Oh all of them. God. Not just some That's of them. Frightening. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. I and I was like in my early 20s. So I'm Frankly not like the cool, I've calm, been on that train you know, the well. cool, calm, responsible character you find now. No, of course you know, not. You, um, and Kate, man, you like you know, yourself too. Exactly. Um, you know, that was a different time when I when I when I was a bit more excitable, and I was in, I was put it this way: if a train was ever delayed and I, someone was angry and said, "Why are we stopped here?" Mm. Um, it wouldn't be strange to hear the words come out of my mouth that were, "Sorry, we've just found a head on the track." Even mm. though that's not mm. real, even though it wasn't real, oh, okay. but that normally well, that calms the situation. That normally calmed the situation well, what down. What you were doing mm. there, you were risk assessing, yeah, and you were saying the yeah. best solution to calm this down mm. is a head on the yeah. track. Yeah. So that do you know one of the things Again, I'll just while well, we're just the, no, the biggest mm. one head of the on bi- the track. Yeah. Mm. The one of the biggest regrets. Moment. One of the biggest regrets of my life. Yeah. Is. I'll tell you, I'll tell this story right now. Oh, no no issue telling this story. Music here to no, play no, on. it's a, it's a, it's, it's not like sad. Oh, okay. Sad? <laughs> Is that too, too, too loud? Too, I think too that's up? a touch loud. Too sad. Right. Okay. Sorry. It got us a strike here, Dave. <laughs> um, so talking a train. Yeah. I was doing. I was on a train going to. I think it was Blackpool. Mm. And oh God. And the, and it was chocker, absolutely mm. chocker. I think we were going through Ley, Leyland, was Leyland. it? Somewhere like Leyland. Mm. And loads of people got on, and I couldn't physically get through the same. I had to check all the tickets. Mm. And I couldn't physically physically get through the same. And I knew the boss, like the proper big boss mm. of Lime Street was on this train. But I didn't really think about it, because I was like, I'm doing my job, I'm mm. fine. And next minute, I, get a, I go back to the cab, and I get a phone call, and it's a... Uh, the big boss has just rung and he said you didn't go through the train and check the tickets from Leyland or something where like four people got on yeah. and it's quite an intimidating job because you have to walk through the train and ask angry people for mm. their tickets again yeah. and you, everyone knows how annoying yeah, yeah, that yeah. is and mm. I, I was quite young and I was like I didn't really like doing that I didn't mm. like getting in people's faces and he rung up and I knew that was bad news for me yeah. and I honest to God we got to the next stop, mm. which was another little small in the middle of nowhere kind of stop. And I honestly regret to this day not getting off that train, just walking over to the other platform. I say I'm serious in this and just leaving that train there because that train could not have moved without a guard. So I would have fucked up the entire rail network. Just Why with, do you regret Because I really do regret it. I really <laughs> do regret not just going over onto the bridge, getting on the next train back to Liverpool and just going, see you fucking later, I'm going. Because I hated the job. I hated the shifts. I hated the people. I hated the bosses. And I just w- I think that I could have absolutely gone out in a blaze of glory by doing that rather than going out with a whimper because some mm. bell end had got on the phone and gone, he hasn't mm. checked any tickets. And I honestly, that's like my biggest regret in life. I could have caused, uh, I could have been, the railway network was stuck today when a train was left on its own in the middle of, the middle of nowhere. Captain 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 man. Wanted the police are looking for this man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but it would have just mm. been, it would have just been an epic way to go out in a blaze okay. of glory. Okay. And I really wish I'd done that. Fair enough. Sam, have you got, 
anything throughout the days, or have you got your own topic I've very got, briefly? I've got my own, really, but I'm going to fall very out of depth, and I, I sort of Go dealt on. with it in a, a slightly different way from, from okay. what Ped did with his situation. So I, I, this was 20 years ago, and I'd finished university, and I'd just started doing stand-up, but I didn't have a proper job, and I was desperate for money. And I, I decided to get a job. There was jobs going in the revolution, you know, the vodka bar in oh, town. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I turned up at this, like, open, like interview thing where you had to say something about yourself and then I just lied and said oh I, I've got loads of bar experience in Australia I've never worked in a bar never worked in a pub had you ever been and to I, Australia I've been to Australia oh, okay. but I thought they won't check that because the internet's no. quite new at this point mm, and I yeah. thought they can't check they'll, just, watch they'll, they'll take me away for it I look yeah. like I've worked in a bar you know whatever just so, throw truth in and a couple of times you yeah been fine. oh you galah yeah you know stuff there like that go. I had the lingo down so Brilliant. they gave me a job and they gave me a t-shirt with like the revolution thing on and it was too small it looked like a boob tube like my belly was sticking at the bottom it looked ridiculous and they said they give us training to learn how to make cocktails because there's a lot of it you know a lot of it was cocktails there mm-hmm. and different types of vodka and stuff and i turned up on the day my first shift and they said oh yeah we haven't got time to do the training now just just get on with it and we'll do it later i was like what because i didn't even know how to pull a pint i didn't Aww. know anything i could work the tap if someone asked for water i could get the water all right, to be fair, that, that was, was on you that was on me. Oh, yeah, it was all my fault. I couldn't mm. turn at them and go, because I've lied and said I'm this, like, you know, I know what I'm doing. I know all the Tom cocktails. Tom Cruise of Revolution mm. Bar, he was. It, it was ridiculous. So the first order I got, he asked for three cocktails. It took me about 25 minutes to make three cocktails. because so I, And by the end of it, he's, 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 his head's on the bar, and he's like, Jesus. And I said, oh, if it's any consolation, mate, I'm annoyed too, <laughs> which mm. is not, not how you treat your customers, is it? And then the, the manager came over and said, oh, right, someone's been sick in the bog. Can you clean it up? I was like, what? He said, yeah, you've got, you've got to clean up the sick. So I cleaned up someone's sick, and then I just thought, I, I'm done. And I just yeah. I, I just walked out and went home. I left the metaphorical train on that track. Yeah. See? And then the following following day, the manager was phoning saying, oh, I, I know you're not coming back, but can we have the T-shirt back? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, I've given it to my girlfriend who's five foot one. <laughs> oh, my God. Awful. Different class, Sam. But you did. I, you you I, did. Yeah, I you walked know. out looking like Michael Keane coming out the tunnel of love. I did. Mm, yeah. Like... You d- yeah. False. You, 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 face. you left that train at the station. <laughs> and I wish I'd been more. I wish I'd been stronger like you, Sam, personally. The irony is they, <laughs> well, didn't, you know. ask, they didn't ask me for the uniform back, which is didn't ironic. No. I just burnt, oh, I, I, burnt, I literally burnt it. Sure. I, on, I, burnt, I did a burnt it. I <laughs> literally. Do you look back and think. There was just certain acts that proved you're like there's quite a child. You've never worked you. on the railway. You don't know. You weren't there. No. That was my nan, right? <laughs> You've never Your worked. Nan worked on the railway. Nam, nan, oh, nan, nam, nan again. Oh, nam. Oh, nam. Right. I thought you said that was my nan as well. I was thinking what yeah. <laughs> your nan done. What your no, nan been? Your stuff. No, no. That was my nan. Viet nan. That was my nan working, yeah, working, working, right working on working on and working on um, working on uh, in Lime Street was was my nan. It was heavy times, mate. Mm. I once took nine months off sick when I worked on Merseydale. Wow! And 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 I and I was not sick. It was literally <laughs> nothing wrong with me. I just had enough. Was that the last time you had a boss? Uh, no, because I had a boss when I was on Royal Mail. Um, oh, was that after the train? I also went off sick on Royal Mail and oh. never went back. I hate having bosses. That's why I like like working here. Mm. I hate it. And ironically, I'm very rarely off sick, am I? No. I'm very rarely no. off sick. That's yeah, the I, irony. Took, I took nine months off, si- off sick, came back for two weeks and then went to WrestleMania in America. <laughs> <laughs> Which WrestleMania? WrestleMania 17, the greatest oh, WrestleMania I of all time. I, I was went there. to WrestleMania 15 in nah, America. shite. Absolutely I'm shite. That one. I know, man. But anyway, next ever. time you're off sick, we're all going to go, ah. mm. Well, I was off sick about a month ago, and I really was sick, mm. but I'm very rarely off sick. But yeah, I ate it. The you railway. built all your sick days up on rail, bloody... On the British railway. Rail on the railway, yeah. You on know the railway. Rail. Nah. Fair play. I, I mean, I'm not sure you, you should be admitting stuff I couldn't like give that. a monkeys. Nine months off sick, and there was nothing wrong with me. If anyone's listening, ha, 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 full pay, nine months, you idiots. <laughs> Great Don't message wonder. for the kids there, Ped. <laughs> Great we know, we know we've got such we know we've got such a young audience, so <laughs> take what I, you can. Stick exactly, it to the man. Exactly. I, I, all I I've think... got in my head now is Dave Garden horses. Yeah, that's like all I like, in Lycra. In <laughs> yeah, Lycra. Lycra. One man, a bike and three horses. 
Absolutely. Cool. They, 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 now there's a there's a film, and plus also don't don't forget that we have two further titles for uh, potential autobiographies from the right Go celebrity in, in in Head on a Train and also Head on a Bar. <laughs> Both work for different Both scenarios. Both work absolutely perfectly. Mm. What's yours, Baz? Out of depth <laughs> story. No, I mean you name your autobiography. Oh, <laughs> name of my autobiography. Mm. Uh, Head on the floor? <laughs> head in me hands, because I wear head, head. Head, head in me hands. I mean, yeah. that, 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 I mean that's, that, that's an that's great English. Head, head, in, head in me in, hands. Head, head, head in head. my hands. Head in my hands. Head in Ped's nans. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm saying nothing. I am saying nothing. Hey, listen, I've said nothing either. This is just visual, visual. <laughs> Deny everything until you can't. Let's leave it right. there. Go. <laughs> I'm going, honestly, because this is going to descend even worse because you've got that look in your eye. And Dave is now doing the aisle. Yeah. That from the 80s, yeah. even and though he's, he's pretending. He's trying to figure out the right sound effect. And exactly. he just doesn't have the right sound effects. No. It's not that like that. <laughs> yeah, that's not the right one. one is that it? is yeah. very much the right <laughs> one. Right, we're going. Like, subscribe, do all our five-star reviews, all of that stuff. We'll be back next week. Big thanks to Sam. Big thanks to Dave. As always, we will see you later. Bye.